starting the presentation. Thank you. Uh, Cecilia, you can go ahead. Or Catherine, if you want to uh, present, you can go ahead. Okay. Our presentation was Sundus and Spagdom. We were, we were tackling the sustain challenge. Uh, Kieran is team leader. And we were looking at air quality on the ISS, which is a closed system. And sustained poor air quality can lead to varying lung diseases, asthma, which I have, COPD, lung cancer, and heart disease. Because there's no gravity, dust does not settle, and the human body of an adult sheds nine pounds of biomatter per year annually. Uh, plants have evolved to be pure nature's air purifiers. So um, there are some plants that live in nutrient poor soils. These are known as carnivorous bog plants. And they're not mechanical, they weren't a mechanical sweeper. They were biologically designed through evolution sweeper just to grab uh, like Venus flytraps, insects or like butterworts, they were sticky tape. Sundews were a combination of both. Uh, Karen, if you can show us the next slide. Um, they have little sticky globules of syrup on the end and they will just collapse around anything they can eat. They grow in sphagnum moss. They're weeds. Um, they're very hardy in many ways. The problem with putting many plants uh, that might do the same thing in space is because of the difference in gravity, water does not siphon the same. And um, I'm sorry, I just got uh, a message. Water does not siphon the same and it causes root rot. That's one of the problems you have with growing crops in space. And Kieran, next slide. We proposed an experiment where you could use a simple tray of sundews, common weeds, that are globally found around the planet, globally found in just about every environment on 747 flights on earth to blow air across them to grab uh, trash out of the air, to clean the air, and then take it from there to the ISS. From the ISS, we would see, um, does it do the same? Can it clear the air? Then from there to the lunar colony, then from there, to um, Mars. The constraints were, the, it was incredibly good on cost. Okay, we could, we could get the whole system running up, a tray of these Sundays running up for less than, oh, six to a thousand, six hundred to a thousand dollars US. The concrete, the limitations we had to conquer were size, um, just getting people used to it and making sure they were sustainable because there's a, there's a lot of things in the microbiome that we don't know about yet. That's Cecilia's specialty. He's our, and, and Emily's there. Are, Emily's a plant geneticist and Cecilia is food chain supply. And I'm not, uh, oh, the, if you could go to the next slide, Karen. These are our references. Now, all this was in public domain. So at your leisure, because uh, I'm sorry we took so long to get started, it would be possible to go over this. Um, what we realized, the Phoenix Mars Rover in 2008 sample soil came back saying the soil was, um, eight to nine pH. Okay, that they didn't say background radiation on the soil. They, they, that's other people's work. But there's a whole range of pH with water being seven that plants will grow in. Um, sundews are, five pH, so they wouldn't be the first plant, five to six pH, they wouldn't be the first plants you sent. You're actually looking at Native American crop rotation at this point. 
where you send in something to deplete the soil and then replenish. And that's, again, Cecilio's expertise. He's a, he does food supply out in California. That was why I was really hoping he would get to be the main speaker. I only designed the experiment when I said, wow, I wonder if we could use something that wasn't um, a limited supply mechanical thing like fly paper to clean the air so that people could breathe clearly and we could stop the transmission of particulate borne diseases, not necessarily viral like COVID, but anything that might attach to skin flakes or dust or other things. So I'm sorry if this wanders around, but that's in, that's in essence the, or the, that's in essence the experiment. I believe it would be a good fit for Utah because Utah's pH soil is about the same. And that is it. And we can open for questions because I know I've left a whole huge slew of, well, what about this, what about that? And I'd rather you have the time to ask. I can um, add more to it too, if necessary, if I would be allowed. Oh, yes, you're, you're, you're main speaker. I'm, I'm okay. terribly sorry this, this yeah, messed up. No, but you got, you got more from memory because you've been working on it longer than I have. Um, yeah, um, see the Sundews and Sphagnum was our project. We would tackle the increasing problem of air quality that leads to a cleaner water supply and a healthier environment. In our study, we pointed out the increasing particulate matter that is one part of air pollution focusing on, on the Washington and Baltimore metropolitan corridor. That was from our presentation. Satellite data indicated a 30% reduction from 98 to 2012 over the Eastern United States. Cleaner emissions regulations um, uh, were key in this role. However, more improvement is needed. Um, sundews are unique in their small size. They can be up to 10 inches with a weight of 500 grams. They can live up to 50 years and are very adaptable and are used to, um, they're used to, uh, to living in hostile environments. They are low maintenance and self-pollinating. They have antibacterial, antifungal, and medicinal properties. Sphagnum moss is very small and can live for 10 years. After their life cycle uh, is complete, they break down into the bog and form uh, peat soil. This moss can absorb many times their weight in water. They are tolerant and can inhibit bacterial growth while um, consuming lots of methane. It's very low cost and efficient. Like when it comes to crop rotation, a lot of the farmers around here, they'll grow certain crops or, or like um, they'll, they'll graze their cattle to get the soil fertile and then they'll rotate a crop in to deplete nutrients out to, to rotate nutrients back in. It's like your seven, six and seven generations of crop rotation. They'll rotate a crop in to deplete the soil and then they'll rotate a crop out to actually remove remove toxins and heavy metals from the soil. That way, all they have to do is add like gypsum or calcium or magnesium back to the soil. See, um, I'm not that uh, intellectual about the Mars soil atmosphere. I know it is, I know it is capable of sustaining life from the uh, uh, Phoenix project said that it actually has water. There's um, water, there's water nutrients and stuff like that that can be found in the top layers of the soil. So even if there wasn't that high of a radiation in the soil, the uh, sundews are very, very used to living in hostile environments. So they probably would be survivable. Even if it wasn't used as an air purification method, it could be used to help strip the soil of heavy metals and basically give you an ability to grow something else in there. Anyone else have anything to add, Kieran or Catherine? No, that's it. I'd, I'd rather field questions because there may be people sitting back and saying, yeah, but, or um, yeah. Well, what about this in light of their projects? Because it's such a huge topic. 